Hi there, in this brief video, I'm going to highlight the differences between statically allocated memory and dynamically allocated memory. Let's begin. So with statically allocated memory, that is memory that you get or that's allocated at compile time, which is to say that when you compile your program, any memory that you have declared statically is going to be fixed in size. That's the amount of memory you're going to get for the entire run of the program. So some examples of this, right? simple old int i, for example, here we got four bytes for that, or maybe we create an array of integers. Maybe we want 10 elements. Okay. When the program is compiled, we're going to have a total of 44 bytes for the entire run of the program at this point. We got 40 bytes for the array and 4 bytes for the integer. Now, or for the integer i. Now, that's great if you know for a fact that's all the memory you're ever going to need. And you know ahead of time before your program even runs that that's the amount of memory that you're going to need. But what if you don't know ahead of time how much memory you need? What if, for example, you want to ask the user how much memory they're going to need? Well, you can't declare memory ahead of time uh, in response to a question that you haven't asked yet. So the solution to that is to use dynamically allocated memory. And dynamically allocated memory is allocated at runtime. So that means that you're getting memory assigned to your program after your program's already begun running. Okay, so what are some examples of this? Well, examples of this are going to include something that looks like this. Int star my pointer equals new int or int star a pointer equals new int 10. Right? So in order to have dynamically allocated memory, you're going to need to have some pointers, right? So on line 13 here, in the first example, we've got this integer pointer IPTR, which is going to hold the memory address of our newly allocated integer variable. And in order to perform dynamic memory allocation, we have to use that new keyword, right? So this is dynamically allocating an integer Right? And this is dynamically allocating an array. Okay. So on line 14, we've dynamically allocated that array. And again, we're reusing that new keyword or we're using that new keyword. So if you look at line 13, the way this breaks down is, is you're saying to the compiler, to the computer, please give me an integer memory location, four bytes. Right? And so once that happens, then what you're saying is, okay, New is going to return the memory address of that newly allocated integer. We got to put it somewhere. So let's put it inside of this pointer right here. Similarly, for the array, we have to specify that we want a new array. We want 40 bytes to hold 10 integers. When that's completed or when the computer, uh, when the operating system gives us that memory address, new is going to return that memory address and it's going to need to be stored somewhere, so we'll put it inside a variable that can hold a memory address, okay? Now, before your program finishes executing, with dynamically allocated memory, we have to free up that memory. We have to mark it as no longer being used by our program, so that way the operating system knows that it's okay to use that memory for some other program that's running. So how do we do that? We use the delete keyword. And so we're only gonna delete pointers not actual integer variables or anything that's any variables that were statically allocated. Okay, so delete I pointer for a single memory location and then delete with angle brackets for arrays. Okay, now what's the difference in how we use these things after the program has begun running? Well, I mean, you know how to use an array or a variable like you know, i 
you say int i equals 5, or you could say i of 3 is equal to 87, for example. Right? Now, how do you use the dynamically allocated memory? Well, for arrays, it's the exact same way. You use it the same way no matter if it's dynamically allocated or statically allocated. So we can do something like this. Right. Now for using dynamically allocated variables, just individual variables, we need to do a little bit more work. We have to dereference the pointer whose memory address or whose uh, memory location or who is storing <laughs> the memory uh, address for the newly allocated variable. So we have to do something like this. Okay. So again, the big difference is statically allocated memory is memory that's allocated before the program runs, right? So that memory is fixed. You don't get any more. If you need more memory, too bad. If you don't use all the memory, too bad. It's just a waste. With dynamically allocated memory, we can use exactly as much as we need. That allows us to do something that looks like this. We could ask the user something like, you know, how many numbers do you want to enter? Right. And then the user could enter in their response. Right. Oops. So if we have a statically allocated size variable, we can we know ahead of time that we're going to ask the user for an integer. So it makes sense to statically allocate this. We know we're going to need exactly four bytes to handle that. And what doesn't make sense is to try to statically allocate an array of size elements because we don't know before the program runs how many elements that's going to be. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to use dynamically allocated memory. And we'll call this numbers list. Right? So I make this pointer called numbers list and it's going to store the memory address of the dynamically allocated memory. So we're going to need ourselves a new integer array that is size elements long. Right? Now let's not forget that at the end when we're done with this thing, we're going to want to make sure that we free up that dynamically allocated memory so we don't have a memory leak. But once the program's running, right, we, we know how big or how many elements they want, and we dynamically allocate this array of elements, um, then we have an array that is exactly the size that the user needs or that the program needs. And uh, that size can vary from run to run. Okay, So this is dynamically allocated. Right? And down here, we're freeing up the memory to avoid memory leaks. Okay, but once we have this array here created, then we can do with it, or we can use it like we would any other array. So I could have a for loop that looks something like this. Okay. And I could ask the user to enter in, enter a value, right? And then I could read it in to my array by using the pointer. Okay, and once I have that, then I can process that array in some way. Let's say that I wanted to find out what the total was of all the values that the user entered. Right, now I'll statically allocate a variable called total, because I know that I'll need four bytes to, to, to store the total of all of the elements, right? That's that doesn't depend on how many elements they have. I just need a variable that's going to be four bytes long to store the total of all of the numbers that they enter, right? So that's statically allocated, okay? And then once I have that, then I just have to, or I can go through the array and add each number. To my total, to my accumulator. Right, and then I can tell the user what their total was. Total of values entered 
was total. Right. So what this illustrates is that now the um, number of elements that we need is going to be determined based off of you know, what the user tells us. Right. So this is what dynamic memory allocation allows us to do. Another you know, technical difference between statically allocated memory and dynamically allocated memory is that statically allocated memory is memory that's allocated onto the stack. Dynamically allocated memory is allocated onto the heap. Another side effect of this is that stack memory is faster than heap memory. So just an FYI. Okay, now let's run the compiler on this program. See if I made any mistakes here. Would be shocked if I didn't. I'm shocked I didn't. So let's go ahead and run this thing. Okay, so now I'm asking the user, how many numbers do you want to enter? So let's say four, right? So four is going to be stored inside of size. Again, size, that variable fixed in size. We know that we need four bytes to store this integer. That's not going to change. We'll statically allocate that. We know that we need that many bytes for that variable ahead of time, right? But what we don't know ahead of time is how many elements we'll actually need for our array. And that's what line 30 is taking care of, where this array is going to be created right now after the program has begun running. So when I type four, that array was created with exactly four elements, in this case, 16 bytes. Next time I run this program, maybe I type eight. Then the array that gets created is 32 bytes long for eight elements. Right? So the amount of memory that you get can vary with dynamically allocated memory. We can specify that as the program's running. Okay, so now we're into this for loop where we're going through and populating the array with some values, right? So that's for the first element, the second element, third element, uh, fourth element, okay? And once that loop is finished, then the next for loop comes along and processes that array. It totals up all of the values in the elements and stores them into our statically allocated total variable. Again, that total variable, we knew ahead of time exactly how many bytes we needed for it. It was gonna store a single integer, doesn't matter how many elements are in the array, so we can go ahead and use static memory allocation for that, okay? And then at the very end, we wanna make sure to free up the memory that we dynamically allocated to avoid memory leaks, okay? So that memory, not part of the program. Anything that's dynamically allocated not part of the program. So when the program terminates, if we don't have these delete statements, that's going to be a memory leak. That memory is still going to be marked as being used by our program, even though the program's not being uh, executed anymore. Okay, so I think that's enough for this video. I don't want to go too long. Uh, my goal here was just to highlight the differences between statically allocated memory and dynamically allocated memory. The difference, main difference is statically allocated memory you get that memory, you're requesting it at compile time, right? So once your program's compiled, any memory that's statically allocated, that's what you're getting. That's how many bytes it's fixed in size. With dynamically allocated memory, we use the new keyword, we use the delete keyword, we use a pointer, and we can request after the program has already begun running, we can request additional memory or we can, addition, or we can request our memory at that point. So that allows us the flexibility of you know, changing our memory in between runs of the program without having to reprogram or recompile or do anything like that. Okay, anyway, so uh, thanks for watching this video. And if you find it useful, uh, please consider hitting that subscribe button, uh, giving it a thumbs up, really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.